and welcome. I'm Melinda Kinlami. Tonight, trial begins for the people suspected to have been involved in last year's attack on St. Philip's Catholic Church, Ozubulu, and Ambra State. Supreme Court upholds trial of Olisa Moitu insists the former PDP spokesman has a case to answer. Interpol commends Nigeria's anti-corruption fight says is a model for other African countries. And twin explosions in a mosque in Libya leaves several people dead. And business news tonight. And on business news tonight, Nigeria's total revenue from crude export rises by 29% to 7.3 trillion Naira in 2017 on increased crude production and higher oil prices. And in sports news, 2018 Winter Olympics get underway as organizers stage a colorful opening ceremony in South Korea, Pyeongchang. From Abuja, former chairman of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor Tahiru Jega, scores African countries low on democracy practice. We we'll begin tonight with a trial of the suspects believed to be involved in the Ozubulu church killings in Anambra State. The accused persons are facing a 25-count murder charge at the State High Court in Inewi with Justice Fidelis Anyoku presiding. The first witness, the former President General of Ozubulu Community, testified against the accused persons, reminding the court of the horrific events that shaped August 2017. It's the beginning of the path to justice for victims of the August 6, 2017 massacre in Ozubulu town in Anambra state. <laughs> Lawyers arrive in the court premises as early as 8 a.m. The trial has also drawn a crowd of interested parties to the court. And then the suspects arrive. Thirteen of them will answer to a 25-count murder charge before Justice Festus Anyuku over their involvement in the church killing. The prosecution counsel, J.J. Zoko, presents two witnesses who narrate the incidents of the Black Sunday to the court since the trial judge had ordered the prosecution to begin cross-examination. We've completed with two witnesses. What happened in Ozobol is, 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 a, is a tragedy in the entire Ebo land. And we pray that such a thing will never happen again. Now, justice is a three-way street. Okay? Justice for the accused, justice for the society, and justice for the dead. So we urge the court that since hearing has commenced, that uh, the, application should, uh, the application for bail ought to be refused. Defense counsel Festus Kiyamo had also filed a bail application on behalf of the suspects, a move which the prosecution vehemently kicked against, claiming the suspects had not shown any special and exceptional attitude to deserve bail. The court will give a verdict on the bail, I think on the 20, 23rd, 23rd March. I can only tell you that um, the wrong people are in court. The court session over and security operatives shield the suspects from the media. Residents of Ozubulu and indeed the southeast of Nigeria woke up to the news of the murder at the St. Philip's Catholic Church in August last year. The police had pointed accusing fingers at two brothers based in South Africa and serving murder sentences in a South African prison. But all the people ask for now is justice for the dead. To another court, but this time in Abuja, where fresh attempts by the former spokesperson of the People's Democratic Party, Oli Samitu, to stop his trial for fraud has again hit a brick wall as the Supreme Court upheld the ruling of the Court of Appeal today, which ordered the trial of Mr. Mitu for a fraud case brought against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Mr. Mitu is standing trial for allegedly diverting 400 million naira from the former National Security Advisor, Sambo Dasuki. The appeal court had described Mr. Mitu's application as incompetent for failing to comply with the provisions of the Constitution for filing such appeal. 
In a similar opinion, a five-man panel of the Supreme Court led by Datijo Mohammed said the court could not entertain a suit with a fundamental dent emanating from the nature of the filing at the lower court. And still on legal matters, the president has approved the compulsory retirement of Justice Adini Ademola of the Federal High Court following the recommendation of the National Judicial Council. President Muhammad Buhari also approved the dismissal of Justice Shegun Takode of the Benin Division of the Federal High Court for alleged misconduct. He is to refund all salaries and allowances earned illegally from December 2015 when he was sworn in as a judge of the Federal High Court till date. A statement from the senior special assistant to the president on media and publicity, Mr. Gaba Shehu, says the actions meted out on the two justices are in accordance to Section 292 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. Justice Ademola allegedly received 30 million naira from a senior advocate of Nigeria in March 2015. He was later cleared of the charges by a federal high court in Abuja. And meanwhile, a Lagos High Court sitting in Ikeja has issued a warrant for the arrest of the chairman of Innocent Motors Limited, Mr. Innocent Chukuma, for failing to appear in court. Justice Mujisola Dada issued a warrant following the failure of the de defendant to appear in court for a second time for his arraignment on criminal charges filed against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. The judge also ordered that Mr. Chukuma be arrested kept in custody and produced in court at the next adjourned date, which is March the 14th. Before the court made the order, a mild drama ensued in the courtroom with Justice Dada threatening to charge the defense counsel for contempt of court for his disrespectful conduct against the court in his opening address. The Secretary General of the International Criminal Police Organization, Mr. Jorgen Stock, has commended President Muhammad Buhari's government for its efforts in fighting corruption in Nigeria. Mr. Stock is also pledging his organization's support for the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, at the international level. The Interpol chief was speaking during a visit to the EFCC headquarters in Abuja, where he was received by the agency's acting chairman, Mr. Ibrahim Magu who explains that the EFCC has always had a good relationship with Interpol, especially in the area of information sharing, but is asking for more collaboration with the organization, which has 192 member states across the world. Universities in Nigeria should be more transparent in the use of funds approved and dispersed to them for proper accountability. And this is according to a senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, who is also calling for the strengthening of campus unions in order to properly fight corruption in the institutions. He was speaking at an event organized by the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SERA, in Lagos. Apparently disturbed by the high rate of corruption in Nigerian universities, the Socioeconomic Rights and Accountability Project, SERAP, supported by the MacArthur Foundation, launched its latest report titled Stealing Our Future. Whatever we must do right within the Nigerian environment, we must start from our education sector. The high point comes with a strong revelation from the latest report on corruption in Nigeria's universities. The report highlights how Nigerian federal universities have been stripped apart by corruption. It also calls for strict compliance to rules and regulations. First of all, is to put in place a system for promptly punishing convicted wrongdoers in the universities, irrespective of personalities involved. Nigeria's human rights lawyer, Femi Falano, also lends his voice against the rot in Nigerian universities. Mr. Falano also calls for the strengthening of all campus unions in order to ensure proper accountability of funds approved and disbursed in the universities. A my position we should have made clear to us and the unions in the campuses is that if the law is properly implemented and the funds or the taxes paid are monitored effectively, we may not have to have the unions embark on strike so persistently. 
With this extensive discourse, it's clear the rot in Nigeria's education sector has gone beyond the political space to the ivory towers. But with recommendations from this report, is there the political will to make a difference in Nigeria's education sector? This is a must-do for the Nigerian government in order to secure a bright future for the young generations. From education to security matters now, at least three people have been killed in fresh attacks by suspected herdsmen in Sokwa village, Logo local government area of Benue state. The state police commissioner, Fatah Owoshini, confirmed the attack to Channel Television and says his officers have been deployed to the affected village and some of the survivors are responding to treatment. Some victims, six in number, who had been attacked by some harmed men who immediately fled, um, were found. And on the spot inquiry that this police team conducted there um, revealed that um, the three of the victims had gone to fetch water in that stream. And um, while they were fetching water, they said they suddenly had some gunshot. Uh, these same armed men had also attacked four others riding on two motorcycles and uh, in the process snatched one of the motorcycles from them. So the police um, team that got there met on the ground four wounded victims while um, two were met dead. Um, they quickly rushed these four victims to the hospital. One later died out of the four persons that were rushed to the hospital. One trailer load and two trucks of unregistered pharmaceutical products have been impounded by the National Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, at Apapa in Lagos in about two months. Now, the agency also conducted raids at several locations across Lagos and Ogun State, which resulted in the seizure of several other fake and substandard drugs as well as food items. We have to have a stricter uh, law or bill uh, to discourage, you know, peddling, selling, importation of such drugs. Until we have stiffer penalties, I don't think we can curb this problem. Uh, if somebody can be fined 500,000 naira uh, or go to jail for two years, is 500,000 naira worth a life and we're going to launch a campaign a grassroots campaign uh, in March or very early April uh, using young pharmacist uh, group of uh, pharmaceutical society of Nigeria uh, there are thousands and thousands of them in every nook and corner of Nigeria they will be going to secondary schools uh, talking about uh, the ways to avoid abuse of drugs, and this will be consistent. It's not going to be one-time show. In part two after the break, hoodlums disrupt peaceful protests against tariff at the Lekki toll gate in Lagos. Join us again. <laughs> 